Solving rational equations. A rational equation is an equation containing rational expressions. And if you'll remember, a rational uh, expression is just basically a fraction. If we have an equation where a fraction equals a fraction, where we have a single fraction equals a single fraction, it's called a proportion. And we can solve a proportion by cross multiplying. So it doesn't matter which um, crisscross you do first. You can multiply the x times 15 first or the 10 times 48 first. It doesn't matter. If I multiply x times 15, then I get 15x equals 10 times 48, so that's 480. And then to solve this, I would just divide both sides by 15. And I get x equals 32. Here we have another proportion. We have a single fraction equals a single fraction, so we're going to cross multiply. All right, so if I cross multiply this, that's 3 times that whole numerator, which is x minus 1, equals, this would be 2 times 5x plus 2. Okay, so since we're multiplying a monomial or a single term times a binomial, we have to distribute. So that gives me 3x minus 3 equals 10x plus 4. Okay, so I want to get my x's on one side, my constants on the other side, so I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. And that gives me a negative 7x minus 3 equals 4. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And that gives me a negative 7x equals 7. Divide by negative 7. And x equals negative 1. If the equation is not a proportion, then the easiest way to solve a rational equation is to get rid of the fractions. And we can do that by multiplying every term in the equation by the LCD, or the least common denominator. So if we look at this equation, the least common denominator of this equation would be 24. So we're going to multiply every term in the equation by 24. Now there are four terms in this equation. This is a term, this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. We want to multiply every term times 24. All right, so if I multiply this times 24, times 24, times 24, times 24. Okay, so we could multiply the 5 times 24 and then divide by 8 in this first term, but it's easier if we go ahead and reduce first. So anything that's on the bottom or anything in the denominator can divide into anything in the numerator. Well, 8 will go into 24 three times. So then we can just multiply 5 times 3. Otherwise, we'd have if we multiplied 5 times 24, we get a really big number, and then we have to divide by 8. So I'm dividing first, and then if I multiply 5 times 3, I get 15. And don't forget the x, plus 1 times 24, which is 24, equals x times 24, so that's 24 x. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing in this last term. I'm going to go ahead and divide before I multiply. 6 will go into 24, will divide into 24 four times. So now I'm going to multiply 4 times the negative one, this negative 1. Make sure you pay attention to the signs. Okay, so 4 times negative 1, that would be negative 4. So now all of the fractions are gone and I can just solve this linear equation. Again, I want to get all of the um, variables on one side and all the constants on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides first. All right, so that gives me a negative 9x
and then I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. So I get negative 9x equals negative 28. And now I divide both sides by negative 9. And I get x equals 28 over 9. All right, let's look at another one. Again, we need to multiply everything by the least common denominator. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the least common denominator is. Well, the least common denominator in this rational equation would be 3x. So we need to multiply every term times 3x. And again, I want to go ahead and reduce before I multiply. So if I reduce in my first fraction, the x's are going to cancel out. So then I'm left with 3 times 3, which is 9. In my second term, when I reduce, the 3's are going to cancel. And I'm left with 2 times x, so that would be plus 2x equals, in the last term, the whole thing's going to cancel out. The whole 3x is going to cancel. So I'm left with 23. Alright, so then to solve this, I'm going to subtract 9. And that gives me 2x equals 14. And then I divide by 2. So x equals seven. Okay, now um, there's one thing that we need to look at. When we're solving rational expressions, we need to know what values would cause our fractions to be undefined. And if we get a solution that would cause our fraction, any of our fractions to be undefined, then we would have no solution. Now in the previous rational expressions that we worked out, our x's, or we didn't have any x's in the denominator. Uh, we had x's in the numerators, and it doesn't matter what we get in the numerator. But here, we have an x um, right here, and we have an x right here. So if our solution, if we plug that in, if that would cause any of our denominators to be zero, we would have no solution. But it's not going to, because if I were to plug um, 7 into the first term, if I plugged in 7 right here, that would just be a 7. It's okay to have a 7 in the denominator. If I plugged it in right here, 3 times 7, that's 21. That doesn't make it 0, so this is my solution. So really, the best thing to do whenever we're starting a rational expression that has x's in the denominator, if we were to go ahead and determine what our excluded values are, or restricted values, um, then that would help us in we would know uh, when we got to the solution whether or not it's going to cause our denominator to be zero. So I'm just going to put uh, as an abbreviation, like I said, either restricted values or excluded values. I'm going to put EV for excluded values. So if we look at the denominator, what would make any of these be zero? It would be zero. If I were to plug in zero right here, then that denominator would be zero. If I were to plug in 0 right here, 0 times 3 is also 0. So 0 is the only value that would be excluded from um, our possible solutions. But we didn't get that for an answer, so our answer, our solution is 7. Alright, so let's look at this next problem. First of all, let's determine what our least common denominator is. Well, our least common denominator here is x minus 4. Right, so remember, when we have a binomial, it's stuck together. We don't think of this as separate numbers. Well, x minus 4 is in both of these denominators, so that is my least common denominator. And then my excluded value would be 4. If I got 4 for an answer and I plugged 4 in right here for x, 4 minus 4 would be 0. So I can't get 4 for an answer. If I do, I have no solution. Okay, so now 
We're going to multiply every term by the least common denominator. We have three terms here. So I'm going to multiply this 2 times x minus 4, this times x minus 4, and this times x minus 4. Well, in my two fractions, the whole x minus 4 cancel. So I'm left with 2 times x minus 4 plus, I just have a 4, equals x. Okay, so let me simplify. I need to distribute the 2. I get 2x minus 8 plus 4 equals x. That's 2x minus 4 equals x. I want to get my x's on the same side. All right, so I have a negative 4 equals negative x. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, and that gives me 4. So 4 equals x. All right, so that would be my solution, but if I look up at my excluded value, so if I look up here, that's the same as my excluded value. So that's not a good solution. That's an excluded value, so I have no solution for this um, equation. All right, let's try one more. Now, before we can determine what our least common denominator is, we have to make sure that all of our denominators are completely factored so that we can be sure to include every factor, every different factor in our least common denominator. Well, the last denominator here is not completely factored. We can factor this by using a difference of perfect squares. So if I factor x squared minus 9, I get x plus 3 x minus 3. All right, so now when I determine my least common denominator, my least common denominator is x plus 3, x minus 3. And then I have two excluded values. If I were to set each one of these equal to 0 and solve, I would get 3 as an excluded value and negative 3. As an excluded value because if I were to plug positive 3 in right here 3 minus 3 is 0 if I plugged negative 3 in right here negative 3 plus 3 would also be 0 so both of those are my excluded values okay so now I'm going to multiply every term times x plus 3 x minus 3 all right so I'm multiplying every term times the least common denominator and in the first term x minus 3 cancels. So I'm left with 1 times x plus 3. Well, 1 times x plus 3 would just be x plus 3. Okay, so then in the next term, x plus 3 cancels. So I'm left with 1 plus 1 times x minus 3. Well, 1 times x minus 3 would be x minus 3. All right, in the last term, the whole x plus 3, x minus 3 is going to cancel, and I'm left with just 10. Okay, so let's combine like terms. x plus x, that's 2x. Positive 3 and negative 3 cancel out. Equals 10. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 5. Okay, so let me check my excluded value. That's not the same as my excluded value, so my solution is 5.